All right, check, check, check. We're all good. Uh, welcome back for a recap. Finishing today nicely green. Base hit 155, so a little bit better than Friday. And I can feel, you know, my confidence starting to build once again. And I will probably be able to push my share size again soon. Uh, we did get some momentum on INM, but still a uh, small size, only to 100 share increments. Uh, my biggest size was 500 shares, which I'll show you uh, my trades at the open. I uh, did very well here at the open break. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, got caught in a couple uh, false breakouts here pre-market and took took a couple losses. Small size. But uh, then at the open, I was able to make it back here on this breakout here at 15.50. And then the dip, a couple of dips. Uh, here, uh, I did small gains here, but scalping the front side. Uh, this is very tough because it was a, a little bit bigger spread, you know, normal well, normal for a $16 stock, but 10, 5 to 10 to 15 cent spreads at times. And it does eat away at your profits if you're scalping. So very, very tough to trade if you're scalping, uh, especially with this type of price action here on this front side. Pops up a little bit, a couple cents, pulls back, pops up a little couple cents, pulls back, pops up. It never really gives like a clean, nice pullback. Uh, and an extension. It was just just kind of like a grindy action. I never do really well on those, especially if the stock is a spread. So small gains here, uh, and then the rest of the day this is all break even here on INM. <clears throat> um, on PXMD, it took a couple of trades, but missed the front side. There's a nice couple of legs here, but I completely missed them, uh, and then got caught in the chop a little bit. But so, so small gains here on PXMD. Um, so next will be is IFBD, which I took some trades pre-market. I thought this would kind of get a little bit, uh, give a better, bigger move because it was a recent reverse split. So very small float, five, under 5 million float, uh, but never gave continuation. I was small green on the front side. Once I went for the pullback, BWAP didn't hold up. So it took a small loss there, but all small size, small size. Uh, and, uh, RGLS, RGLS not good either uh, here volume was increasing so I thought I was gonna start pulling away here uh, I started adding higher and then you know quick quick five cent flash and I was like all right I'm done with this so I took a loss uh, here broke back over VWAP I thought they were gonna immediately push to 212 but we didn't do it uh, at all but let alone it wasn't you know it wasn't really strong I thought it was gonna be high day volume coming into 212 uh, to squeeze, but nope, didn't happen. So I did take that one off for a break even. Um, now we have, uh, we'll go over the video. All right, what's up guys? Nope, that's the wrong video. That is my, uh, um, my first attempt at recording this. Okay, this is the real video. So here, <laughs> here buying the dip. The dip, the dip, the dip, right at the open. I like the dips on the open because, especially with something like the high, that's the uh, leading gap gapper on the day, at the open is going to be a lot of volatility. And so if you can just scalp the dips, uh, it's a really good strategy for me. I've been doing real well with it. Uh, you know, just trying to capture 5 or 10 cents for scalping off the dip, not necessarily looking for the high day push yet. Uh, so first few minutes can be very volatile. You can capitalize on, you know, if you just take quick profits. So here we're finding some support here on this previous high pre-market and then uh, VWAP support. Again, scalping the dips, small green, small green. Um, and I do take a, actually a small loss here. I get in, no, not here, but this was the, the best entry here so we see uh, we're pulling back and volume is decreasing but we're holding the VWAP so VWAP is solid support with this pre-market here high and one of these pre-market highs back here so if this holds this is this is a good enter a good um, bottom bounce uh, entry or well, not bottom bounce it's just a, a support like a support bounce or support hold entry looking for now a potential red to green so you have lower lower selling volume coming into a major support. We're actually breaking this major support, and we're holding. After we break, a lot of the times, if you if a lot of the times the price will break the support, 
And then that's when you can see whether uh, shorts are in control, sellers are in control, or buyers or longs are in control. And so here you can clearly see that longs are in control because we broke that support and volume didn't come in. Uh, so we reclaim that pretty quick and that's where you want to be long. <clears throat> holding, holding, holding. I should have been long there and I would be up 40 cents, 50 cents. This could have been uh, my daily goal right here. If I was in two, 300 shares, it could be up 100 150 bucks, 200 bucks. <clears throat> but it can get a little scary, you know, it's moving up, but it's it's still giving a little bit of uncertainty. You know, it'll still flash down. And that's just a sign of just like weak momentum, like overall weak momentum, weak volume. Uh, it's not really, see like, if this was really strong, this would have been halted up at 1550, 1560. Uh, with high a day volume, but it's taking so long for it to uh, for it to rip, but it does rip, and so that's just a sign of like a slow slow market, slow momentum market. Uh, but I do as it breaks this pre market pivot. Now we're up into this area where the topping tail is, uh, topping sell red topping tail red candle is, and that's where we're starting to squeeze out shorts. We got high a day green volume, um, and three hundred shares. Now I add for 500 shares for the break of 1550. My mistake there was taking it all off at once at 65, but still nonetheless, a nice 20 cent gain. So uh, that put me at, that was $150 wins uh, winner. So that's pretty good. I did, did leave a little bit on the table there by selling it all at once. I was just, just kind of nervous. It was going to break out and then fl instantly flush down. Uh, So that was that. I do take a couple scalps, kind of betting on this is going to hold 1550. Uh, but we do kind of go backside here. And uh, I was in 42 for a bounce. And we keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. I'm trying to get out. I hit sell market or se what did I hit? Sell bid. So I get in here. And I'm hitting. What do I do to get out here? Try, oh, I'm trying to get on a <laughs> count off the ladder if it just keeps selling. So I took a nice 50 cent loss. Uh, no, this one 40 cent loss. Trying to scalp the lows here. $15. Couple cents. Keep kind of selling off there. And at this point, uh, this point we're kind of going backside it could be a five minute dip but here in rgls i thought this was going to pull away and it just never really did just got really choppy up in there uh so that was it i mean <laughs> not much on inm we had a beautiful opportunity there here uh this this red to green and then uh the rest there was that uh red to green here There was the red to green here, but it's very, very choppy. Uh, but, you know, we did break out. Uh, Could have got some opportunity there, which I did kind of made a little bit more there. But, uh, you know, nice basic green day. You know, I'm not really trying to push it too much today. The market's not really calling for that. You know, if I can just get decently green like today, that's fine with me. And uh, there's going to be hotter markets coming in the future. And it's just all about, you know, sustaining uh sustaining profits you know sustaining uh continually trying to stay green every day coming back and uh, waiting for better opportunity so right now i'm just happy to be green uh, and i know there's gonna be a time that comes where it's going to uh call for a lot of aggression a lot of size and uh adding high and adding higher and taking off even higher so that day is going to come uh it's just uh just a matter of when uh still kind of early yet it's not quite uh in uh the q4 q1 market yet so <clears throat> we'll see how we'll see how uh the rest of september plays out but i think once we start getting closer to november maybe end of october november december january february uh volume is going to start picking up uh we're just at the tail end of the summer, kind of still. It feels like, you know, the market still got that summer feel, like less momentum. 
So um, we'll see if September, you know, every month seems like there's one or two stocks that gives continual multi-day uh, momentum. And it's been different every month. So we'll see what October, uh, sorry, uh, September uh, gives us. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, happy to be green. And uh, we're going to come back tomorrow and slay it again. So if you guys are still watching, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, peace.